Hey there, in this video we'll be learning about creating functions in Game Maker Studio 2.3. Before 2.3, each function was a script. So if you wanted 10 functions, you had to create 10 scripts. Now that is no longer the case. Functions now look like this and can be placed anywhere in the code. So I'll go into GMS 2.3, which as of this video is in beta. From the asset browser, I'll create a new script. I'll name this shoot. If you go into the script, you'll see a function with the name shoot. So now you can fill in the contents of your function here. So for example, I'll add this. Here we are creating a bullet instance. We are storing its ID in this local variable and then we are returning that ID. So we are creating a simple script like we always did, but now it's in a function. Now the function name here doesn't have to be the same as the script name. So you can name your script something and your function something else. Then you can simply call the function by doing this. You can also get the ID of the function by simply entering the function name without the parentheses. Now back to our function. If you want the function to take arguments, you can do so here. So you can simply enter your arguments inside the parentheses. And then you can use those arguments anywhere inside the function. So you can see how easy it is to set up and use arguments now. Instead of entering argument 0 and argument 1, we can simply enter the names directly. Now another new feature for the new scripts is that you can enter more than one functions inside one script. So below the shoot function, I can simply enter as many functions as I want. This means that you can now group similar functions inside one script file. Now here we are simply entering functions inside the script and the functions are created when the game starts. So what if instead of functions, we created other stuff like variables. So in the script here, I'm gonna create a global variable. This will be the player name. So this global variable will also be created when the game starts. Any code you put in a script that's not in a function will run when the game starts. So you could now create another script for setting up data at the start of the game. I'll simply name this init. Now in the script, you can remove the function and use it only to initialize data. You can also set up any global arrays, structs, data structures, and even call functions. So I'm gonna call the show debug message function. I'll print a couple messages, and the second one will have the name of the player. So when I run the game, these messages should show up in the output log. And here you can see that they do show up. So anything you put in a script outside of a function runs when the game starts. Now you might remember doing this before 2.3 using the GML pragma function with the global command. But now scripts do that by default. I'll also go into the previous script and remove the global variable from here. Now you can also create functions inside objects. So I'll go into objects and open the player object. Now in the object, I'll add the create event. And now in this event, I'm gonna create a function. So this function will be getName. By the way, there are two ways of creating a function. The first is this, and the second is this. So this way you can assign the function to a local variable, a global variable, or something else. I'm gonna use the first one for now. Inside the function, I'll simply return the name of the object. So we first get the object index from the instance, and then we get the name from that object. You can now use this function anywhere in this object. So I'll print the name to the output log using show debug message. I'll also print another message before this. And now I'll run the game. I'll go into the output log, and here we see the name of the player object, which is oplayer. So the function is working correctly. Now something special about instance functions is that they are bound to the instance that they are created in. So this function is bound to the player and belongs to it. So this means that this function will always run in the player unless bound to something else. So no matter where you call this specific function, it belongs to the player and will always run inside it. Now to demonstrate this concept, I'll go into oenemy. 
Now in the object, I'll add the create event. Now in the event, I wanna get the get name function from the player. So for that, I'll do this. Here I'm getting the get name function itself from the player. That's why I don't have any parentheses at the end. If I did, that would call the function and get the name of the player. So we are only getting the function itself. Now I'm gonna try to use this function to get the name of the enemy object. So I'll print the same messages here that I did in the player. Now I'll start the game and go into the output log. Here under enemy name, we still see O player. So we ran get name in the enemy and still got O player. That's because as I said before, the function is bound to the player. So to run it in an enemy, we need to bind the function to the enemy instance. So we can do that with the method function. This creates a copy of a function bound to a new instance. So we can use this to create a copy of the getName function and bind it to the enemy. So I'll come here and remove this part. Instead, I'll add this. Now I'm using the method function to create a copy of the getName function from the player. Now here we pass in the ID of the instance where the copied function will be bound. And we are passing in the ID of the current enemy instance. So now here we get a copy of the player's getName function bound to the current enemy instance. And when we call it here, it will actually run in the enemy. So to test it, I'll run the game and then go into the output log. And now under enemy name, we actually see O enemy. So the method function did its trick. So through this example, we learn two things. One, instance functions are bound to the instances they are created in. And two, you can use method to copy a function and bind it to another instance. Now if you create a function inside a script, that function will be global. And a global function will not be bound to any particular instance. And so a global function will run in the scope of the instance that's calling it. So as an example, inside the script, I'll create a function. This will be global get name. And inside the function, it'll do the same thing. It'll get the name of the object. So now this function is not bound to any instances. So you can call it anywhere and get the correct answer. Now we'll be learning about static variables. Static variables can be created inside functions and they are only initialized ones. So as an example, I'll create another function inside this script. Let's say this is a function for drawing a box. And let's say the width of that box has to be random. So to get a random width for the box, I'm gonna do this. I'm getting a random integer number between 0 and 22. And then for now, I'm simply gonna return the box width. Now you can see that whenever I call this function, a random number will be selected for the box width. So it'll be random on each call. To test this, I'll go into the player object. Here I'll add the step event. In the event, I'll call show debug message. I'll be printing the return value of the draw box function. So we should get the width of the box, which will be printed to the output log. So I'll run the game and go into the output log. Here we simply see random values being printed every step. So whenever we call the function, a random value is selected for the box width. But I only want one random value. So this is where we can make use of static variables. Now I'll go back to the script and then come down to the draw box function. Now instead of making this a simple local variable, we can make this a static variable. This way the initialization for this variable will only be done once. So no matter how many times you run this function, this will only run once. So I'll run the game again and go into the output log. And now we see one single value being printed every step. So a random value is selected once and then it's used in all the function calls. Now this is particularly useful if you want to get the width of a sprite or any other property from an asset. So this way this function only runs once and saves you some performance. Another useful feature is that you can pass a function as an argument into another function. So this can be useful for callbacks and other stuff. So that's it for this video. In the next part, we'll be talking about structs and constructors. Until then, check out my other videos in this playlist. 
Also, do take a look at my crafting Udemy course. Make sure to subscribe to catch my future videos and I'll see you in the next one.